If you've ever been to Copenhagen, I'm willing to bet money that you walked along the famous shopping street Strøet. If you did, you might remember walking through an open square with a fountain with storks on it. This square is called Amatov, which means Ama Square. The word Ama is the name of a place in the southern part of Copenhagen. In today's video, I'm going to take you on a little guided tour around the square so you can learn some facts and history behind it. Then, next time you visit, you'll know what little details to look out for, and you'll be able to dazzle your friends with some historical trivia. At the end of the video, I'll also do some then versus now photo reenactments, so you can see how much, or how little, the square has changed over time. Amatov dates all the way from the Middle Ages. In this map of Copenhagen from 1377, you can see Amatov is already very well established, and its triangular layout is completely unchanged to how it is today. Also, you can see in the map that Amatov used to be called Ustetov, which means East Square. It was called this to distinguish it from nearby Gamaltov, which is another square that lies further up towards Frohusplesen, or, in English, the City Hall Square. After Ustertov, it became known as Fisketov for a little while, Fisk being the word for fish in Danish, because it was where most of the merchants selling fish were concentrated. However, from 1472, it was recorded as finally being called Amatov. This name shift was, again, to literally reflect what one could find there. In this case, it was farmers from nearby Ama who came to the square to sell their produce. Back then, Ama was nothing but farmland, and the farmers had to sail over daily into the inner city if they wanted to earn some money. Another important date is July 1684. At this time, the city officially decreed that all trading of fresh produce take place within the square, making Amatov the premier marketplace in Copenhagen. As you can imagine, it was an extremely busy and bustling place, and you could find anything from meat to cheese to eggs to vegetables, everything fresh. In the 15 and 1600s, the square was also the site of many festivals and night tournaments, for example, chivalrous competitions, mock fights, jousting, and so on. King Christian IV himself even participated in a couple of tournaments here. Copenhagen experienced two huge devastating city fires that burned most of the old medieval city to ashes. The first took place in 1728, and the second was in 1795. This is noteworthy because the city you see today is essentially a direct result of those events. Streets became wider, brick was used more predominantly in buildings rather than wood, tiles instead of thatch roofs, and something you probably walk by a million times without noticing or thinking about are the characteristic shaved building corners you see all over Copenhagen. This was in fact designed to allow fire trucks to better turn corners to quickly get to any fires. It wasn't just for aesthetics. After the second fire in 1795, Amatov was extremely hard hit. While devastating, it offered an opportunity to redesign and expand the square a little, something that was sorely needed. The market had become extremely overcrowded, both with vendors packed inside the square, but also all the shops surrounding the square were also spilling out onto the streets with their products. It was then that adjacent Hoibroples was developed, and slowly trading shifted more to this spot, allowing Amatov to become more of an artery for traffic to pass through. Farmers trundled up daily on their horse and cart from Ama or other nearby farms and set out their wares for the residents of Copenhagen. It was still an extremely busy spot all the way up to 1868 when market activity moved to nearby Klestenshavn. In its last decades here, the market became known particularly for merchants selling beautifully fresh cut flowers. the city ran a competition for people to design a beautiful new fountain for the square in celebration for Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Louise's upcoming silver wedding. Many wonderful entries were received, but ultimately it was the now iconic Stork Fountain that won. It was erected in 1894 and was placed on the site of an old town well. One funny fact about the fountain is that the design was slightly miscalculated by the sculptor, and when the water was finally turned on after it was installed, it sprayed at an unfortunate angle against the bird's wings, which in turn sprayed passers-by in the face. This flaw was quickly rectified, and today you'd be none the wiser. 
In fact, the fountain was wildly unpopular with the residents of Copenhagen immediately after its installation. More than just bad press, although that was plentiful too, people were literally rioting and constantly vandalizing the fountain in protest. One morning, it was found filled with red liquid. Luckily, it was determined not to be blood, but red dye. Another day, the water had been turned black. Another prank saw it filled with live fish. Lots of people were dunked in the fountain, some willingly, others not. I found an extremely upsetting report of a racial hate crime occurring here, wherein a black male resident was thrown into the fountain by a mob, who thought it was some kind of funny prank. But then, one morning, Copenhageners woke up to a giant lattice fence erected around the fountain in a bid to stop the riots and antisocial behavior. The fountain became even more of a joke, with people quipping that Copenhagen now had the world's largest birdcage. Moving on to some more positive trivia, I read that each year since the 1950s, newly graduated midwives join hands and dance around the fountain. You know, because of storks being the symbol of the bird that brings newborn babies in the little sack. I can't find any contemporary sources for if they still do this to this day, so if anybody knows, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. So here are a few buildings you can look out for that have some really cool history behind them. Amatov No. 33 housed Copenhagen's first ever pharmacy, founded in the 1620s, and amazingly, it was in operation all the way up to 1971. It was called Louvre Apotheque, which translates to Lion Pharmacy. In the 1795 city fire, the original pharmacy building was completely destroyed, except for a lion statue that you can see over the door in this photo here from the early 1900s. I got very excited reading some online sources that said the lion could still be seen today, but after going out looking for it, it appears to have been removed. If anyone knows where it was removed to, presumably for preservation, I'd love to know. Again, let me know down in the comments. The oldest building still visible on the square today is located at number 6. It dates from 1616. Sadly, the other buildings from this time period were largely destroyed in the Great City Fire of 1795. Today, it houses Danish porcelain brand Royal Copenhagen. Also of note, this ornate building was actually done in a Dutch Renaissance style, so it's quite a different, striking building to have here in the square. Keep an eye out for the archway on the right. There's two really old sawed-off cannons that were long ago repurposed as corner protectors from horse carriages. There are quite a few of these around Copenhagen, actually. Amatov also had Copenhagen's first ever public pissoirs, which you can see to the bottom left of this photo here. The square also had Copenhagen's first underground toilets, which have been around since 1901. Before you get images of squalid public bathrooms flashing through your head, these are actually kept in pristine condition, and they're free. They have two full-time attendants, one in the men's and one in the women's, who keep the toilets sparkling clean at all times. Not only that, the interior remains almost completely unchanged from the early 1900s, so it's quite neat to go down and check them out. If you're interested in more history about these specific toilets, Vestibro Local TV did a video on it. I'll link it down in the episode description below. Up until the 1960s, cars were allowed to drive through Amatov and would pass right around the Stork Fountain. In 1962, however, it was officially closed to traffic and became the largely pedestrian-only area you see today. The triangular paving tiles you see laid down throughout the square were laid in 1993, and it's from this date that the square largely remains unchanged from the Amatov you see today. Of course, just with a few changes in the shops surrounding the square. Hoibroplace is now just a place for taking a rest on one of the benches or the cafe chairs. Looking at it today, it's hard to imagine just how busy and noisy this space would have been, even just around 150 years ago. Just to show you how much Amantov has remained relatively unchanged over the years, here are a few historical photos paired with modern day reenactments. I tried to get the angles as close as I could, but as a 5'3 woman working without a drone or a tall tripod, it wasn't going to happen. Thanks so much for watching, hopefully it's giving you a few things to watch out for next time you pass through Amatov. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so you can come along on the next Copenhagen adventure. See you next time!